I'm talking frustrating books, but you're probably frustrated at how bloody long it takes me to get to any tag video. Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am finally getting to the frustrating books tag. Nat of Nerdy Nat Reads tagged me in this back in, I think it might have been October now. I'm so sorry that this has taken me so long. But I'm doing it now, and let's get ready to be annoyed and frustrated for 10 to 15 minutes, hopefully. The first question is name a book you thought would be a five star read, but wasn't. I need to preface this by saying I give a lot of five stars. I think I probably give about an equal number of four and five stars, and that's probably 80% of the books I read. These are completely random numbers I've just made up off on the spot. What I'm trying to say is I give a lot of five stars. I'm very generous with my star ratings and every book I go into, I go in hoping that it's gonna be a five star read. I don't consider three stars or four stars an average good read and five stars amazing. Five stars are really good, but they're not like rare for me. So most books I read, I expect to be a five star book. That being said, Central Station by Lavi Tidhar, I had really high hopes for. This book sounded amazing. The blurb on the back made it sound so incredible. I was so excited to read it and it was just really disappointing. I have a whole video about how disappointing it was. I will link that up here. You can check that out. Yeah, that one really did not live up to expectations. Question two is what book had a great beginning but an ending that let you down? I'm going with Valhalla by Tom Holt for this one. I think this prompt is trying to ask for a book where sort of the first half was good and then the second half tapered off. In this case, the first chapter was incredible. The first chapter had me totally hooked. It had me so intrigued. I wanted to read more and the rest of the book was kind of fairly downhill from there and it never picked back up again. I will link up here to the wrap up where I talk about that book if you want to hear about more of that. But yeah, it did not live up to the amazingness of that first chapter. Question three is do you have a book with a pretty cover but an ugly spine? I don't think I have any books with particularly ugly spines. I have some with nicer spines but there's none where it's like oh I don't like that but the cover's amazing. However, I do have this collected box set of Leonard Cohen's poetry. So we've got two books here. What are they? I haven't read either of these. Leonard Cohen, The Flame, Poems and Selections from Notebooks, which has this absolutely gorgeous cover. And let's see if I can get it a bit closer. You can't really see it because it's so pale, but basically the spine is just fine. And then it came, like I said, in a box set with Leonard Cohen, Book of Longing, which I think is more poetry. And again, love the cover. Spine is totally fine. What I have an issue with, and I'll try and insert a photo of the spines or something so you can see more clearly, is that it's a box set where the spines don't match well. They just don't look like they were made to go together. Right down to things of like where the little publisher's logo is placed isn't aligned. And it's like, this was clearly designed to be a box set. It comes with like a box that they live in that has the covers on it. Why would you not do this better? So again, nothing against each individual book. If it was just one of them, I'd go, this is lovely, I have no problem with it. But together, it just looks really weird. <laughs> Question four is, do you have a book series that doesn't match? Maybe some of them are in paperback or hardback. Maybe they're different sizes. Maybe they have different cover designs. And yeah, I mean, I have some series that match, but the biggest one that doesn't match that comes to mind is my Terry Pratchett collection. I don't have anywhere near all of the Discworld books, but I do have a fair number. I have a rough guess, somewhere around 15 of them. And I've got at least two, if not three different paperback cover designs. I have hard covers that are different heights. Yeah, they don't match at all. And then the question also asks, does this bother you? Uh, not really. I like all of them. I like that those books are ones that I've read really heavily and really show that I've loved them. Eventually, I would love to get the collector's library matching editions that would look beautiful on a shelf together. But for now, I love these books. I love having them. And I love that I've loved these books. Honestly, it would probably bother me if I had all one cover design except for one book or two books or something. But because there's a whole bunch of different ones in there, it's not a big deal. Question five. Is is there a book from your youth that you can remember parts of but can't remember the name of and can't find anywhere? I could maybe find this book if I looked intensely. I haven't tried that hard. But when I was in middle school, my middle school library had this book that was like half reference book, half 
coffee table book, but for children, I don't know how to describe it. It was this big, chunky hardback. And it was essentially fashion plates of clothing designs from around the world through time. I think it spanned from the year like 1000 to 2000, so like a whole millennia. I can't really remember too precisely. All I know is that I adore adored this book. I took it out of the library multiple times a year, would look at it cover to cover, looking at all of the different types of clothing from all around the world. It was so cool, guys. I have never seen it anywhere else. Again, not that I've looked that hard. It was amazing, and no wonder I'm so into costume now. Like, that's the sort of thing I was reading when I was 10. Of course I'm gonna like that stuff as an adult. Question six, are there any books that you're certain you've read but that you remember nothing about? Absolutely. I know for a fact that I read Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I remember buying it. Goodreads records that I read it in 2013. I remember reading the copy that I had. I remember buying more Kurt Vonnegut books because I thought that was something I was gonna get into and then never reading them and then donating them to a charity shop. I saw someone describe what happened in Slaughterhouse-Five a couple months ago and went, I don't remember any of this. Not that I particularly remembered what I thought had happened in Slaughterhouse-Five, but it had nothing to do with what this person was describing. So I need to reread that book because I know nothing about it at this point. It'll be like I'm approaching it new. <laughs> Question seven, have you ever recommended a book you love to someone and they start telling you everything they don't like about it? Does it bother you? In other words, do your feelings get hurt when someone doesn't love one of your favorite books? I can't think of this ever happening to me, honestly. Outside of booktube, I don't recommend that many books to people. When I do, I tend to try and really think about books that they will like, not just recommending my favorite books. So. For example, the books I recommend to my mom probably aren't gonna be my absolute favorite books because she loves Scandinavian murder mysteries. That's a genre I barely read. So I'll recommend her books that I've read that I think might be similar to that, or I'll recommend her books that I've heard other people talk about that fit her tastes, but I'm not gonna start recommending books that I love because we have different tastes. That was a very long-winded answer of saying, I've never been in this situation, so I don't know how I would react. I don't think it would make me too upset, though. I can't think of anyone that I would recommend a book to who would be mean about it, and I won't be upset if someone else doesn't like my thing. I like it, but that doesn't mean they have to. Question eight. What is your worst experience with loaning a book out to someone? I feel really boring now, because there's two questions in a row where I sort of have to say, I don't really have a terrible experience of loaning a book out to someone. For the last almost five years, I've read almost exclusively ebooks, so you can't exactly loan those out to people. And even before that, I didn't loan out books that much, so I've never had a terrible experience. When my books still lived in my parents' house, and my sister also lived in my parents' house and would read my books sometimes, I wouldn't let her read my books in the bath because I was worried she would drop them in. But other than that, she always took good care of any books that she borrowed from me. I can't think of any book that I've lent to someone and it's come back in terrible condition or not come back at all. Question nine, show me some of your impulse buys that you've never read. You know the ones, the ones you bought at midnight while online shopping or when you were walking through a bookstore and the magic of all the books made you grab a few too many. And we can't forget all those books at such a good price. <laughs> that one's my advice, that somehow make it into our shopping bags. Most of the books I have, I plan to read eventually. I have very few on my TBR that I'm never going to read. However, there are some on my TBR that I look at them now and go, why did I buy that? One of those is The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. This is apparently a dark, slow-paced fantasy novel that's super long, and listing all those things, I'm just like, that's not the type of book I usually read. Maybe it'll be good when I finally get to it, but that's not something that sounds like a me book, so why did I buy it? On a similar note, I have 2312 by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is apparently a chonky, challenging, slow-paced sci-fi book, which again, slow-paced and long just aren't things I tend to reach for. I'm not that into sci-fi, I don't think. I don't know why I bought this. Maybe I'll read it someday and I'll love it. Maybe I'll read it someday and I'll hate it. Maybe it will sit on my TBR for the next, hopefully, many, many years until I die. Only time will tell. And this is sort of an embarrassing impulse by 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City by K.J. Parker. This is not a nonfiction book about siege warfare like I thought it was when I bought it. This is in fact a novel about an unlikely guy having to defend a walled city against an attack, so it is technically about siege warfare. It's also by Tom Holt. I don't love his writing. Pen names can be really annoying like that, right? Like, I probably wouldn't have bought this if I saw it was by Tom Holt, 
but it's under a pen name, so I bought it, and now I'm like, I don't really want to read it. I wanted to read about medieval siege warfare in a non-fiction context, not a fiction, possibly fantasy context. If you want to see me go through really though all of the books I own and talk about the ones I don't plan on reading, I will put a link up above and in the description box to my TBR sorting videos that I did last year. And uh, yeah, we go through a lot of those of books that I own that I probably won't ever read. And finally, question 10. Just to make you hate me a little more, how many unread books are on your shelves? I'm not sure. Probably about 750 unread books on my shelves total. Keeping in mind that most of those are ebooks, I'm not at risk of death from my book collection. But realistically, probably 200 to 250 that plausibly I might read in the not distant future. This doesn't stress me out too much. I'm working on getting that down a bit because there's a lot of books on that list that I really want to read, so I want to actually read them, but I'm trying to work on that because I want to read the books, not because I want to get my TBR to zero. That's probably not going to happen at any point in the nearish future, so why stress about it? That's all the questions for this tag. Let me know down below in the comments what are some of your big book frustrations or book shames with respect to those last couple questions. But before we go, I would like to tag some people. First, I'm going to tag Sunny from Sunny Luca. I've been loving her channel lately. I'm going to tag the, as always wonderful, Katie of Katie Reads and Rants. I know Joe from Joe Loves to Read has had some frustrations with book editions and ordering books and getting sent the wrong edition and stuff, so I would love to see her answers to this. And I would also like to tag Bethan of Bethan Brininga Sokoler. She, her channel is really great, and if you're not already subscribed, you should go check her out. As always, no pressure to do this tag if you're not interested, and if I didn't tag you but it sounds fun, I would love to see your answers. Let me know down below if you have done a video for this tag, if you plan on doing a video. I love hearing about the sort of like negative or frustrating sides of books as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what all of you have to say about this. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, in which hopefully I read books that don't make me frustrated, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.